just give you my take. I'm obviously not a constitutional lawyer, that's for sure, but I do see this whole issue first and foremost as a liberty and freedom issue. The federal government does not have the power to coerce, compel, or mandate personal behavior. Not for food, homes, cars, stocks, or businesses. Federal government cannot tell us how to behave. Now second, in economic terms, Obamacare's massive spending, taxing, and regulating, it's anti-growth, it's a jobs killer. In fact, the Congressional Budget Office, CBO, is already estimated over the next decade Obamacare could lead to 800,000 fewer jobs. In my view, that is just the tip of the iceberg. Bad news on spending, on taxing, on regulating, and economic growth. That's my two cents. Now, let's bring in former Senate Democratic leader Tom Daschle. It's a pleasure. Now senior policy advisor at DLA Piper. And our friend Oklahoma Republican Senator and Dr. Tom Coburn. Mr. Daschle, Senator Daschle, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Look, are there no limits? to federal power? Are there no limits to the Commerce Clause? Is the Tenth Amendment now out the window? I don't think it's out the window. It's an effort to try to find the right balance. I heard uh, some of your comments, and I would say that we already have a mandate. The mandate we have now is a community mandate. Every time you go into the hospital, every time you pay a premium, you're mandated. It's going to cost you about $1,000 this year to pay for those who don't have, have, comp have, uh, have coverage. And, and that mandate is one that we're struck with right now. So this isn't about a mandate. We're either going to require individual responsibility or we're going to require everybody else who currently has to pay uh, for those who don't to continue to do so. That's first. Secondly, you already have a mandate to pay for retirement insurance with Social Security and a mandate to pay for hospital insurance with Medicare Part A. So you have all kinds of requirements already regarding health, retirement, uh, in and out of the private and public sectors. Those are ones that are going to have to be uh, contended with just as well if you don't like this one. Senator Coburn, uh, do you agree with Senator Daschle about the Social Security and Medicare being exactly like the Obamacare mandate? Well, I think he made the case for why the government shouldn't be involved in these areas in the first place. <clears throat> the people on Social Security today will receive $21, tri $21 trillion back more in Social Security payments than they made. The average person receives t three times what they paid in, in Medicare for uh, 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 over what they paid in Medicare in, about 350000 versus 110000 in. It's a great example why we shouldn't be in this business. The fact is, and uh, Senator Daschle has actually written on it, the problem with health care in America is it costs too much. And this bill doesn't do anything to help the cost. What it does is it actually makes it mu much worse. And what we ought to be doing is how can we make health care more affordable? Because a lot of people who can't afford insurance, they can't afford it because a third of everything we spend in health care doesn't help anybody. And most of that's because of government fiat and government regulations or lack of smart state government. See, Senator Daschle, look, <laughs> uh, I I'm sure you have a lot to respond to this, but already we know some results that the Affordable Health Care Act, the expense has gone from about $900 billion to $1.8 trillion in round numbers. There's going to be substantial tax hikes next year and on into the future. So many businesses complain they can't afford it, and the regulatory rules are going to deter them from making the extra higher. Just on economic terms, much less personal freedom terms, I just don't like this thing. How do you react to the economic issues that uh, I and Senator Coburn are raising? Well, I think you raised some very, Senator Coburn especially raised some very good points about cost. We've got to address them. What, what you and he have to acknowledge, however, is that if we do nothing, if we stay with the status quo, if we don't have the pieces in place afforded us under the Affordable Care Act, we aren't going to be able to deal with these problems in a meaningful way. I, I do disagree with Senator Coburn's uh, uh, characterization of the bill. We're going to have payment reform. We're going to have substantial delivery reform. We're going to try to find ways with which to ensure that we gre create greater efficiency through far greater transparency far more coordination of chronic illness, far more effort on prevention, something he knows a lot about. And all of those things are incorporated here in a way that will allow us, according to the CBO, to provide a trillion dollars in savings over a 20-year period of time. You had Larry, mentioned Larry, earlier here's that... The, here's, here's the question to that. What do you know that the government does effectively and efficiently now that you're claiming we're going to do through Obamacare? And there's not one thing we do efficiently or effectively. 
Well, not I, one. I, I disagree with that too, Senator Coburn. I, I think we do a lot effectively through the Medicare program, but we, uh, I have to say, we don't do it efficiently or effectively through the entire health care sector today. We've got to be a lot more efficient. Senator, you know, Senator Dashlin. Uh, Senator, I hear you, and, and I know you have a lot of experience, okay? I, I just want to raise this point. You, you, you talk a lot about Medicare, fair enough. Most people believe the Medicare system is on the road to bankruptcy. And, and so my concern here is that, in effect, Obamacare is, is Medicare to the third or fourth power or to the rest of the health care economy. If the one hasn't worked, Senator Daschle, why do you believe the other will? Well, that, I think Medicare has worked at least as well as what we've seen in the private sector. We're spending $8,500 for every man, woman, and child in the country on taxes, premiums, and out-of-pocket <clears throat> expenses. That's twice as much as any other country spends in the country today, in the world today, and we don't get anywhere near the results. <clears throat> we have a system-wide problem, not just a Medicare problem or a Medicaid problem. We've got to fix the entire system. We can't be content simply to solve Medicare or Medicaid because that's impossible. You can't isolate out those programs alone. So, we've got to look at cost. We've got to look at access. We've got to look at quality. And until we do that, system-wide, we're not going to solve this problem. Senator Coburn, regarding Medicare and, and Obamacare and, and ensuring those who, who truly can't afford to be insured and dealing with the hospital emergency rooms and the whole rest of this complicated picture, Senator Coburn, is not there a better way, a pro-market, sure. pro-competition, more private sector way There's to do no this. There's no question we could do it. The problem with health care, one of the reasons that we spend twice as much on health care as everybody else is because everybody else thinks somebody else is paying their bill, except for the person that doesn't have insurance. If you're on Medicaid, you don't care what it costs. If you're on Medicare, you essentially don't care. If you've got private insurance, you don't care. You think somebody else is paying the ball. Markets aren't perfect, but we've not used markets to allocate a scarce resource. And what I would tell you is in the areas of Medicare, in the areas of Medicaid, we have been our own worst enemy in trying to use a Soviet-style system to manage it. Why do you think doctors don't take the time to listen to pa Medicare patients? Because Medicare pays only 60% of what it really costs to see that patient. So if you really want to have a patient get great care and listen to the patient and teach them about prevention, you got to pay for it. Medicare won't pay for any of that. All so right. what, we, what we have is a system that ignores market reality, will not use markets to allocate resource, and put it back on the individual to make the best choice for their life. Gentlemen, thank you. i got to leave it there. We appreciate it. Former Senator Tom Daschle and Senator Tom Coburn, Oklahoma, thank you. Coming up, folks, Wall Street starts the week with a bang. The Bernanke signals the Fed's committed to accommodating the markets with a Z.